Welcome to All Grown Up Now, Tales of a Checkered Past. I'm Kenneth D. King, podcasting from my studio near Union Square in New York City. This podcast is an evolution of the tale, All Grown Up Now, A Friendship in Three Acts. This is season two, and it's called Tales of a Checkered Past. It's a collection of short stories from my salad days on up to the present. In each podcast, another self-contained story will be presented. These podcasts will be broadcast bi-weekly, so you get two a month. Enjoy. Episode 72 is a story about someone from my adolescence. Her name was Gwenda. So I call episode 72 Gwenda. In Salina, Kansas, after my father died, there came into our lives a troubled teenager. Her name was Gwenda. I think about her sometimes and wonder how she did in her life. This is a brief story about Gwenda. After my dad died, there was much concern that I didn't have some male role model in my life, what with Miss Anne being a widow woman with two daughters along with me. It was feared that I would turn out to be a big sissy unless something was done about that. The rest of the family told Miss Anne about the Big Brothers Big Sisters organization. Miss Anne applied, or rather arm-twisted, to get a big brother for me in a hurry. I don't remember much about him, as we met only a couple of times. The thing I do remember is how uncomfortable he was around me. Apparently, I was too much of a sissy for him to deal with, but I didn't care about him either. But the Big Sisters part of this program caught Miss Anne's interest. One sign that Miss Anne was coming back to life after Dad died was her desire to get out of the house. As she had no job and had slave labor in the form of three kids to do all the housework every day, Miss Anne had time to spare. For a while, she took a Bible study course, but that eventually petered out. The Bible has only so many pages. She then decided that volunteering was going to be more satisfying as it was more open-ended. So... Miss Anne decided to be a big sister. Why, I'll never know, but there you are. She applied, and after a couple of weeks, she was accepted. They announced to her that they had found a little sister for her. Now, for some reason, the big sisters gave Miss Anne the most incorrigible girl they had, a 13-year-old named Gwenda. The big sisters' organization warned Miss Anne... Gwenda had had a choice between reform school or Miss Anne. No doubt there were days that Gwenda wished she had chosen reform school. Now, to give you a picture of Gwenda. Gwenda was a miniature Janis Joplin, down to the frizzy hair, purple crushed velvet hippie clothes, and whiskey and cigarettes voice. Her mother, a badly bleached blonde, was divorced and worked in a dive bar. Mom rented a house on Broadway near the shopping center on Crawford Street, and she lived with a man she wasn't married to, along with Gwenda's other siblings, who all had different last names. When we kids got to know Gwenda, she told us that she was astonished that Kathy, Lori, and I all had the same last name. Now, Gwenda was referred to as one of the troubled youth that we were hearing about in church in 1971. Yes, church. Miss Anne had embraced the Methodist church after Dad died, but really it didn't last long. As an aside, the church lasted long enough for the church to actually well, swindle, I shouldn't say that, Uh, get mom to donate a bell choir. My bad. 
It wasn't long after we met Gwenda that she got into trouble again. One day, in home economics, Gwenda took a pair of scissors and cut up the back of one of the other girls' sewing projects. Gwenda said it was because the girl was making fun of her and calling her names. This was the first time I heard the word slut, which may or may not have been true, but I wouldn't know. I think her mother was, though. Miss Anne always referred to Mom as that barfly. Gwenda told us later that the students did this a lot. We would call it bullying today. But at the time, given her family's situation, the good and righteous people of Salina, Kansas, would say that she had it coming. Indeed. When Miss Anne got the call from the school, as they called her instead of Gwenda's real mother, Miss Anne descended on the school and Gwenda in a very Old Testament sort of way, bellowing in that voice of God that she could do when chewing out non-relatives. She verbally hammered poor Gwenda about what she had done and hammered the school officials about allowing the sort of harassment that led to this sort of thing. Thinking back, that's something she'd never think of doing for me. That said, the school kicked Gwenda out. Soon after, Gwenda ran away from home and hooked up with a much older guy who bought her lots of clothes. It fell to Miss Anne to go find her and bring her back. She found Gwenda in some dive motel north of town and brought her to our house to stay until the family and school situations cooled off. I thought Gwenda looked so cool in those clothes, as what she got were the early 70s midi and maxi skirt outfits with more psychedelic crushed velvet, and they were accessorized with lace-up thigh-high brown suede platform boots and some fur hats. It was very Giorgio de San Angelo, but my favorite piece was the black Persian lamb maxi coat. Sadly, though, the clothes disappeared when it was discovered that Gwenda also got crabs along with all the cool new clothes. Now, we kids didn't know what that was, and it wasn't explained to us. But for a long time, there was a can of Lysol spray in the bathroom that we were instructed to spray the seat with after Gwenda would visit. For a while, Gwenda was like a cousin who visited frequently and lived nearby. Miss Anne spent lots of time battling with the juvenile authorities, steering Gwenda through the system such as it was in that time and place. Looking back, though, I find it interesting that she could spend all this time on Gwenda, listening to her troubles, and helping her sort out her problems. Because she certainly wasn't doing it with us. Life was moving along, and then it happened. March of 1971 was when Miss Anne got the phone call out of the blue from Don White. The call came late at night, so we kids heard about it the next morning at breakfast. Mom was all dreamy and told us that an old boyfriend from years ago had finally found her. It seems he was stationed in the Air Force Base in Salina in the early 50s, and that's how they got to know each other. He tricked a telephone operator into telling Grandma to tell him Mom's married name earlier in the evening. It never occurred to me at the time to ask, why did he have to trick? Don lived in Oklahoma City. They had talked for hours, she told us, and it seemed like old times, and could he come to see her next weekend? She said, why, yes, of course. She just knew we would all like each other, which was her way of saying, God damn you kids better make nicer else. 
We never, ever knew what or else meant, but we knew it wasn't pleasant. Well, when the family heard about this visit, they were apoplectic. This I didn't understand. I was thinking, good, this will get her out of our hair for a while. It never occurred to me that something was afoot if Grandma had to be tricked into telling Mom's married name. But I was 13, and thinking of more immediate concerns, like, will he take her out for a long dinner so we can have some relief? Maybe we get to watch Dark Shadows and Johnny Carson and The Late Show for a change before she came back to bear down on us again. And, will Grandma stay with us? Always more fun and better cooking. Or will we get Aunt Helen? Grandma, Aunt Helen, even Uncle Bob, all weighed in on the serious mistake Miss Anne was making, which only made her more determined to see it through. Nobody wants me to be happy, she shrieked. Nobody cares about me. So Don was invited to come visit the next weekend, just out of spite. For those who've listened to this podcast before, you kind of know the rough outlines of this story. So for those who haven't listened to this podcast, I'm going to make a long story shorter. Don came to visit on weekends, and Miss Ann traveled down to Oklahoma City a couple of times. Three months later, he popped the question, and they were married. I didn't understand why things were moving so fast, or exactly why Miss Ann was compelled to marry him. I didn't know at the time that getting married in less than three months to someone you only saw on weekends might be unusual. But that aside, what I did understand was that we would be moving to a strange city where we wouldn't know anyone. Life, which was a challenge now, would be turned upside down. As the wedding day approached, Gwenda started feeling insecure and caused some trouble. Miss Anne, of course, went into a she's so selfish, she doesn't want me to be happy routine. Indeed. Sadly, I don't know how Gwenda ended up. Events took a turn when Mom and Don got married, and Gwenda got tossed out when we started packing. Looking back, what Gwenda experienced was crueler than what we kids were going through. We at least had stability, or rather predictability, but Gwenda had none of that. Our family represented some sort of normalcy for her. Even though Gwenda was far from reformed, She allowed herself to believe that we would still be there for her. Our situation appeared less transient than what she was used to. Miss Anne held out the potential of having some kind of security and cohesive family experience, only to snatch it back when it became inconvenient. What pains me to this day was her lack of awareness, her obliviousness, as to how this would affect Gwenda. I do remember our last time together. We were all at our house in the living room. Miss Anne was introducing Gwenda to a new big sister and trying to put some positive spin on the situation. Gwenda sat silently, looking down at her lap, saying nothing, showing no emotion. The new big sister looked like no fun at all. Actually, she looked more like a matron in a women's prison film, what with her gray clothes and sensible shoes. The contrast to Gwenda's day-glow outfit said everything. This was a monumental mismatch. The new big sister eyed Gwenda suspiciously the whole time, just waiting for the jailbreak. All in all, it went badly. Gwenda had been dumped for a man yet again just like she had experienced with her mother several times. And not too surprisingly, Miss Anne didn't, or wouldn't, see what she had done. I couldn't help her because my life was being bulldozed as well. We were all being dragged along in Miss Anne's wake. It haunts me to this day.
Thanks for listening. You can get the audiobook All Grown Up Now on iTunes, Audible, and Amazon, or from my website, allgrownupnow.com. You can subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, Spotify, and Google Play. If you have any questions, you can reach me through the website, allgrownupnow.com. You can follow me on Instagram at Kenneth D. King, on Facebook at Kenneth D. King Design, or on my main website, kennethdking.com.